Welcome back for another OG show live. Mr. Randall, how you doing? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Real Down. Welcome back to another episode of Bass Fishing for Me. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to once again the Bass Cat Games. Brother! This is the final cast. Another segment of uh, Chasing the Tide, your saltwater connection on the Palatine. Welcome back, everyone. Another episode of Feather and Fur, your host. Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Hey, welcome back to Off the Water Epic. Hey, Hey, guys. Welcome to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. We're brought to you by Pelican Built Tough. For all situations, go to pelican.com. Eastport Marina on the beautiful shores of Dale Hollow Lake. For all your lodging, kayaking, go to eastport.info. Yak Gadget. For all your fine kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Welcome back to another episode of Bass Fishing for Noobs. I hope you guys liked that, our new intro. That was my first time getting to use it. I had to actually start recording a second time because I almost... I uh, didn't think it was the right one. I clicked on it and I uh, was totally like, uh, what was that? But uh, mad props to uh, the newest show uh, joining um, the podcast lineup, The Rusty Hook. Um, that was all him creating that uh, awesome intro. So mad shout out to um, our boy. Uh, you know, he. Uh, I'm drawing a total blank on his name. Oh, my gosh, that's horrible. I will remember that. Um, but... I have more exciting news uh, because I, I'm super excited. Uh, I'm almost, you know, giddy about um, the news I get to share with you guys tonight. So um, big news happening for the uh, noob show here. Um, i had been thinking about for a while, you know, obviously uh, since Ryan left, I've been flying kind of solo. And um, the past couple of weeks, I really started thinking, you know, I really could use a co-host. And uh, I talked it over with uh, Brian, you know, the OG and uh, just mentioned him, you know, that that was something I was thinking about. And he was all for it, man. He's like, you know, I definitely think it would be good. So, um, you know, word got around the Paddle and Finn crew. And lo and behold, Miss Susie reached out to me. So let's bring her in. And uh, welcome to the new show. Officially, my new co-host, Susie. What's up? <laughs> oh man so uh Susie, welcome again uh, you've been on the show before a million times and i'm sure our listeners are familiar with the outdoor one show because uh, uh which is still going to probably be happening from time to time um but um yeah welcome to the new show officially as my co-host thanks uh glad to uh you know join in and be a part of this uh awesome new endeavor um so yeah like sean said uh if you guys don't know me i'm a uh, susie roloff um i was doing like my own kind of side segment for a little while about a year year and a half ish um called uh, adventures with outdoor woman and uh, then I started taking a little break from that just because I got kind of really heavily involved with uh, behind the scenes stuff, uh, judging tournaments, uh, being a tournament director for several different uh, tournament leagues and everything. So I was just like, I'm like crazy busy right now. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I'm starting to make a little bit of a comeback here. So uh, I thought I'd join in with Sean. Uh, for, you know, some time going on now. And uh, my other, um, you know, my original show, Adventures with Outdoor Woman, uh, I'm going to start recording some of those. It won't be as frequent uh, just because, you know, I mean, I've got to help my host here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, be on the lookout for that. I hope to record for that one, uh, hopefully maybe within the next month or so, because uh I got some crazy things happening coming up, so... Uh, can get into that a little bit. Uh, yeah. Real quickly, I wanted to shout out John Rapp. I'm so sorry, John. I totally was <laughs> blanking on your name. I'm like, oh, I got to mention him because this intro is awesome. And then I'm like, oh, crap. I can't remember his name. That's so bad. <laughs> but John Rapp is the host of the Rusty Hook, who is the newest uh, host here on Paddle and Fin. So, and he created that uh, intro for us, along with a bunch of other uh, media stuff that he's doing for us. So... Uh, he's really gr good with that stuff. Obviously you guys can tell. And, uh, so we're super happy to have him join our team and John, welcome. Every, um, I'm sure a lot of our, uh, listeners are probably already familiar with you, uh, cause he, uh, he's been on, uh, quite a few times, um, very colorful guy and, uh, you know, super nice guy, kind of probably the nicest guy you'd ever meet. So 
And Big shout out to him. Pretty good moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. He will bring that little red cooler around and get you into trouble. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so Susie, I know you've been on here before, you know, why don't you go over a little bit about your background? You've been involved in kayak fishing and, uh, you know, for a, quite a while and you have a pretty, uh, lengthy resume, I think at this point. So <laughs> just, just a little bit, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, not, not quite like what some of the pros have, you know, but, uh, yeah. So I first got into kayak fishing. Um, gosh, it was probably like 2011, 2010. And uh, I just kind of did it for fun, though. I was more like in the kayaking. I had like a little sit-in Pelican kayak, you know. <laughs> and um, then I was like, oh, you know, I could go fishing out here if I wanted to. So then I'd take like a little tiny tackle box with me and a little spinning reel. And i drill the uh, fishing rod holder into that thing. And uh, just kind of, you know, had a little bit of some leisure kayak fishing around uh, some local places. And... Um, then I met my husband in uh, 2013, and then 2014, uh, he took me to a wreck and boat show, and I discovered the world of Hobie kayaks. And so, like, <laughs> mind you, you know, not that I'm very, you know, brand specific or whatever, but, like, that was my first experience, my first exposure to anything, and, like, I saw what they could do, and I was like, I have to have one. I have to have one. Now, mind you, you know, I was not rich by any means. I'm still not rich by any means, um, you know, and had to put a down payment and then, you know, make monthly payments for a year. Um, but uh, that June, I uh, went and picked up my first uh, Hobie Mirage Outback. And then when I went and picked it up from Quest Water Sports in Ottawa, Illinois, I saw the flyer there for a kayak fishing tournament. And so I was immediately intrigued. I was like, oh, what's this? There's kayak fishing tournaments? Because, you know, I knew of the big boat fishing tournaments and everything, but I could not tell you any of the big boaters names or anything like that. Maybe except for Kevin Van Dan, but that was it. Like I knew of nobody or anything like that. So I looked into it, you know, I was like, Hey, I'd like to compete. And uh, they're like, yeah, sure. Come on. We'll show you everything. And, uh, you know, I competed, I caught like, uh, I think it was for bass, but they, uh, accepted, um, hybrid bass. So like striped bass, but just, you know, the little short ones and uh, they accepted those. And I caught one of those and that was it. But uh, it was still a blast, and so then uh, I got to talking to uh, the guys who were running it, and I was like, so what does it take to run like a kayak fishing tournament? What do you guys do for everything? And he was like, well, how about you join our crew and uh, find out for yourself? And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was in, so 2014 is when I had the first tournament, and then 2015 was when I got on with Great Lakes Kayak Fishing Series. And the first couple of tournaments was just more of like, you know, eyes wide big and, uh, you know, jumping into the deep end right away. Cause I was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, what are we doing? Like, how does this all, how does it all work and everything? Learning the ins and outs of everything. And uh, by like the third tournament, you know, I was like, all right, you know, get kind of the groove of everything and whatnot, you know, and met a lot of different people, you know, and never felt that like, you know, I was like, outcast or weirder or anything for being like basically kind of the only female in nearly every tournament that I showed up for and uh, helped out with. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the fourth tournament we had was the salmon tournament. And uh, we uh, just so happened to experience the death of an angler at that oh, time. Wow. So, yeah, uh, I got quite the, uh, the experiences my first year getting into this. Um, but, you know, it definitely didn't uh, stop me. If anything, it uh, helped me appreciate more about, like, you know, safety and awareness and all that other stuff. So then that next year, I was still on staff with Great Lakes. And then I was like, oh, I wondered, you know, what other kayak fishing leagues were around. And then I discovered that there was Kayak Bass League, also known as KDL. And uh, these tournament leagues both run in uh, Wisconsin and Illinois. And uh, 
if you guys aren't uh, like familiar with like Illinois, Wisconsin, so like I live kind of like in central Illinois, which there's really only like one like lake around here that's fishable. Otherwise I have to travel like at least two and a half hours to go to these other wow. areas. So, you know, no big deal. <laughs> the majority <laughs> of the members are uh, based in um, like, you know, Chicago suburbs and stuff like that. So it's like what, an hour and a half to Madison, if that in some other places, but you know, that, that didn't phase me at all. Um, so then that was, let's see here, I think 20, 15. So then 2016, they asked me to become staff with KBL as well. I was like, sure, why not? You know, <laughs> more experience, you know, more exposure, get to learn the ins and outs of everything because not every club is ran different. You know, everybody has different ways that they do everything and whatnot. So definitely got me a lot of exposure and everything. And uh, mind you, uh, towards the end of the season in 2016, I had no idea who Chad Hoover was or what KDF was. So like, I, I think I kind of knew what KDF was because like I'd heard people talking about like a national championship and I was just like, yeah, <laughs> you know, that, that that's definitely not for me. I'm not going to get anywhere with that. Um, well, at the end of the season in 2016, um, they were doing like the roster for who qualified for the 2017 championship and they're like well hey we just had somebody who had to back out you're next on like the roll down list are you interested in going and i'm like well what is it where is it what does it involve and all that other stuff and so you know they're like well it's at kentucky lake um you know i think at back then it might have only been like a 200 some odd entry fee or something like that but then they also had like the open the championship and like I think a couple other events running at the same time as well. And um, Attorney X was relatively, I, I don't know if I should say relatively new. I'm trying to remember when Attorney X came out, um, but we hadn't used Attorney X very much. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, this seems like it'd be pretty straight, uh, straightforward. So um, me and um, the KBL staff, and I think a couple other members, we uh, rented a house down in uh, Kentucky Lake, spent a week down there. I didn't have a clue as to what I was doing or like how to break down water or anything. Like you want to talk about the ultimate experience as a noob, like that was for sure. And I mean, like I've heard tales of Kentucky Lake and everything, but like getting down there and I'm like, holy crap, this lake is huge because you know, it spans Kentucky, right. Tennessee. It's not just one state, it's two. And then there's two sides to it because like it's kind of like a big really long elongated horseshoe you know and i'm like what did i get myself into <laughs> <laughs> so pre-fished for a few days and um i don't think i caught my first fish until um i think it was that i'm trying to remember what days uh it was on i think it was either on like saturday sunday or friday saturday i can't remember but the day before the tournament started was when I caught my first fish and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to stick with this area and go for it, you know? And, uh, day one, I, uh, you know, I had a, uh, Hobie Mirage Outback, but I had that, uh, limited edition orange one that they had come out with, uh, I think it was the year prior. Cause like I saw it and I was like, I gotta have that orange one, man. Like that looks <laughs> freaking awesome, you know? And, um, so yeah, like the first day, I was out fishing this, um, you know, uh, oh, kind of like, it wasn't really like a cliffside. And like people have told me they're like, well, it's it's winter pool compared to summer pool. Like I had no idea what that meant either. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, there were so many things that I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I should be doing. I think I had all spinning reels too at that point as well. I don't think I had quite learned to use a bait caster, but I think it was just starting to, but like everything was spinning rail, all that other stuff. I had like a little itsy bitsy Lowrance, like three or four or something like that. Cause I had just bought it. Cause like, you know, it was like the thing. So I was like, okay, I got to buy one of these, <laughs> <laughs> you know, be part of the, the cool kids crew. And uh, so, you know, I'm fishing around these different areas and everything. 
and uh, you know, I'm not having much luck of anything. And I'm like looking at my fish finder and I have no idea what I'm seeing or looking at. Like I see things, like, <laughs> I'm just like, what, what? I don't know, oh, yeah. I don't know what this means. <laughs> And so it was probably about hmm, maybe 10, I think, or so. It might have been like 9 or 10. And, I mean, you know, we've been fishing since like 5.30 or 6 o'clock. So it's been a while. I had a single bike, you know. And so I was like, okay. I mean, I, I had lures and stuff everywhere across my entire deck and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, all right, I'm going to pack this all up. I'm going to clean everything up. I'm going to get my phone out and just Google what to throw during these types <laughs> of conditions. And that's okay. literally what I did because I was just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> that's hey, You know, it's a strategy. But, you know, and then like I was also like, OK, I, I know what <clears> the lines <throat> mean on the fish finder and everything. I was like, OK, I can pretty sure I can figure out if it's fish or structure or whatever. You know, so there is this one area where there was like kind of like a, a rocky sandy bank and then like about maybe oh i don't know about 20 yards out of it it had like kind of like a steep uh incline to it and so every time i i kind of like be doing like a little zigzag over it and like i would just see fish just like stacked up kind of hovering towards the bottom and i was just like okay what do i do next so like i just googled what to like throw on the bottom for fish, yes. you know? And the previous night, uh, a good buddy of mine, um, Titus Dominguez, he, um, you know, he had given me um, a couple of shaky heads, you know, cause like I'd, I'd never heard of them or whatever. And he kind of told me what they were and how to use them or whatnot. I was like, all right, you know? So I was like, okay, I'll get one of these, you know? And then I'm like, I'm looking at the water. I'm like, okay, I know the clarity's not good. So I need to use like a dark color. I was like, okay, well, I had, the best thing I had was like a blue ribbon tail worm. It was just like a yum brand or whatever, right? And so I was like, all right, you know, I'll just cast it out there and do some interesting reeling in or whatever and <laughs> see what happens. The next hour, I could not stop catching fish. Wow. I was just like, oh, okay. So like things started clicking. You know, and as somebody who is new into all of this, it was just like, okay, you know, I'm I'm putting two and two together. I'm paying attention to like my surroundings, you know, like water temperature, what the weather's doing, because it was it was overcast and it was chilly. I think the water temps were only like in the mid fifties, I think. And so um, I was like, okay, you know, um, just just keep doing what I'm doing, and like, yeah, the next few hours. I was just catching fish left and right. And I was just like, okay. But like, I just, I didn't even have like any clue as to like how good I was doing or anything like that. I was just like, I figured it out. I got it. I got it figured <laughs> out, you know, but like the spot I was in, the cell service wasn't really that good. So like, I knew that like, I'd have to be back by a certain time if like I couldn't upload and stuff like that. But once I got back up to the ramp, I was able to upload everything. And um, <laughs> I think they had actually turned the leaderboard off for day one before I even had a chance to look at it. But like, you know, I made sure everything had updated, you know, and uh, packed everything up and got back to the check in headquarters. And a uh, buddy of mine like is talking to everybody and he points at me and he's like, you, <laughs> he's like, you kicked ass today. I'm like, I did. He's like, yeah, you're in 12th place. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was totally beyond myself. I just could not believe that that had happened and just was like, oh my God, like I can't, I can't even, you know? And I mean, th there were some decent fish caught on that day one. And uh, I was like, okay, you know, I was really worked up and everything, you know, people are asking me some questions and whatnot, you know? And of course, being like a noob and like being a girl, I was just like, do I tell anybody? Like I've heard people say, like, you don't tell people what you caught them on. You got to keep everything a secret and all this other stuff. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to tell anybody yet. I was just like all freaked out about it too. I was like, I don't, I don't know. I, you know, I was just like, I don't want this spotlight right now. I was just, you know, I'm a noob. I don't know anything. I'm nobody, you know? And so... <clears throat> 
I went back to the house, you know, and everybody was just like, you know, on me and bragging about me and everything. They're just like, yeah, you know, she's a sleeper. You know, you got to watch out for her. She's going to sneak up on you and everything. And I'm like, oh, okay. If you, <laughs> you know, I didn't have the greatest confidence, you know, that I was going to do really good on day two, you know? So, um, but like, you know, I asked a lot of people, um, or, you know, people asked me where I'd fish, you know, and I told them, and they were like, well, hey, you know, we'll we'll make sure that, you know, we leave this whole area to you and everything, which was also kind of like a noob experience as well, because that taught me, you know, like the, um, you know, the, the courtesy, etiquette, yeah. yeah, yeah, the ethics, you know, when it comes mm. to tournament fishing and all that other stuff. But like, also in my mind, I was just like, I don't care what you guys catch fish too, because, you know, they hadn't done as good either. And I'm like, just, just come on out. Like there's more than just like this little area that I was catching them in. You know, I was like, you fish all around these areas. I'm sure you will. And by golly, uh, we had, it was me, Scott, Alan, Titus, I think it was Tony there. I can't remember, but me and the KVL guys, we were all out there and it first started with Scott. He, <laughs> we had a, a Facebook chat going of like everybody that was staying at the house and like the text read, holy crap. <laughs> and like a picture came over of like a 20 inch fish and we're like, Oh man. Or it might've been like a 19 and a half or something like that. You know, we're like, Oh man, that's really awesome. You know? And then like a couple hours later, uh, Titus comes over. He's like, Holy beep. <laughs> and we're like, Oh, well, what's this? And it was like a 20 something fish. And we're like, Oh my God. You know, it just like, everybody was like catching, you know, these big fish. And so uh, day one, like I started off pretty strong, you know, I, I had bites, but it wasn't quite as, um, quite as intense or as frequent as, uh, you know, day one. And I also noticed that they weren't quite as shallow as they were. So like they were deeper and then mm -hmm. I also had to slow down as well. So I was like, okay, you know, I got to change some stuff again, you know, trying to make mental notes of, you know, what I'm doing and stuff like that. Um, at the time, but then also, you know, like at the same time, it's just like, I'm thinking about, you know, oh, you know, I'm starting to put pressure on myself, you know, it's like, well, I had to a place on day one, you know, you don't want to blow it or anything like that, you know, but then I'm like, but this is, you know, my first time out here and everything, you know, trying not to get all psyched out and everything. And, right. um, I had five good fish, I think around 10 or 11 or something like that, but it wasn't like a significant <clears throat> limit, you know, to like kind of place me high. And so I was like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm just going to keep, keep going out there. And, uh, I was fishing this one point, uh, with a buddy of mine, Paul Gula <laughs> was his name. And, um, you know, we're both fishing out there and I think he was using like a Carolina rig, which back then I couldn't have told you what that was or how it worked or anything. I was just like, oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> you know, because I'm like, I don't know what that is. Um, lo and behold, to this day, I still haven't tried a Carolina rig, so. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried it much. I, I, I've tried it. I, I think I tied it once just to say I built it, you know, and, and mm -hmm. but uh, I, I, I never, I don't even know if I fished it more than like five minutes. I was like, uh, I'm, <laughs> Going back to what I know. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. You build those confidence baits and everything. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were fishing this point and we were fishing about, oh, 10, 12 foot of water or so. And um, we know that there was like kind of like this rocky point uh, that would come out. There was like a campground back in the background. And uh, we kept on getting like snagged on stuff in there. So we didn't know if there was just like other junk down in there or whatever, but um, you know, I had lost a couple shaky heads and whatnot, you know, and uh, you know, I was reeling in my, uh, my shaky head worm, you know, and I was doing it kind of slow and then like, it just stopped, you know, and, and like I went to pull and I was like, Oh, I think it's snagged, you know? So then I go to reel it again. I'm like, Oh, and then it started moving. I was like, Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, there's something on there. So I really started fighting. I was like, oh, this is really good. And so I'm like, okay, you know, I, I've definitely got a fish on whether or not it's, you know, a bass or what I need. Who knows? You know, I'm reeling it in, reeling it in. 
and I'm getting close to, you know, getting it to me. And this thing jumps and like me and Paul, like look at each other. We're like, holy shit. <laughs> Cause like, we just see the massive size of this thing. And I'm just like, oh my God. And believe it or not, he had actually had his GoPro going. And so like, I got it in the net and, uh, you know, I brought it up and let's see here. Can, we can share videos on here, right? I believe so. Yep. You should All be right. able to share your screen. Yep. Yes. Let me, you guys, <clears throat> will get, you know, I haven't shared this in so long. So like if anything like really tells me that, you know, this is me, this is it. Let me go to share my screen. go all right <laughs> can you hear it uh, i cannot hear it uh, let's see here if i can look like it was muted but paul was talking i'm i'm not the best with technology sometimes so i don't know if i need to have my computer audio going or not. But anyway, can you hear it? I can. I Nope. I have no audio from the video. <laughs> wow. Look at that. <laughs> So Paul's going on in the background. He's like, look at that. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, beyond myself. I mean, you can obviously tell that, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I was just like excited and beyond myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. I can't imagine. I would I would have been shaken. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was, I was definitely shaken. I like, <laughs> that is still to this day, my PB, um, bass. Wow. <laughs> I wish you could hear the audio in this right now, but I'm like, <laughs> holy shit. And he's asking me, he's like, how big is it? I was like, it's a 22. <laughs> nice. He's like, Oh, are you in big bass? I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm in big bass. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, uh, that fish right there, uh, secured, uh, not only big bass for that day, which got me not only $300 or was it two, it was three, two or 300. Um, it also got me a Yeti cooler. Wow. Yeah, and uh, it secured my, um, oh my gosh, 12th, 11th. Oh my goodness, why am I blanking on it? <laughs> <laughs> 11th place, right? Or was it 12th? 11th. 11th, yes. <laughs> oh, wow, man, this, oh God, you can tell I'm getting old now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm actually bringing it up on uh, Tourney X right now, um, but the 2017 National, yes, 11th out of 364 anglers. Walked wow. home with uh, $2,300. Wow. Like, yeah. Best That's day of crazy. my life. It was, yeah. it was insane. <laughs> crazy. And then, uh, yeah, from then on, uh, the rest is history, just about. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, uh, what really, um, you know, set me up for, uh, you know, getting into kayak fishing, just like full steam ahead and everything. And so, um, I'm still with, uh, KDL, um, Great Lakes. I kind of stepped down from them, not last year, but the year before, um, just cause, yeah. 
a lot of crazy things going on. <laughs> and they were, uh, they changed to being more Wisconsin based um, just because Illinois recently had this stupid permit change to where um, any and all tournaments, regardless if it's a boat or kayak tournament, 10% of the um, payouts have to go back to the state. And we're just like, what? Yeah, I remember it, reading that. Uh, That's crazy. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Which I mean, I don't I don't blame, you know, these tournaments and everything, you know, ditching out of <laughs> Illinois, but like at the same time I'm like, now I have to travel even further <laughs> <laughs> for these tournaments, you know. Right. So um but yeah, and then uh, you know, obviously I joined uh Paddle and Fin podcast uh, a couple years as well. Uh been doing some crazy awesome stuff uh with geek these guys uh for quite a while now <laughs> yeah you, you've been i mean behind the scenes too you were a big mm -hmm. player in the in the uh the trail series um i know yes. you put a crap ton of work into that um mm -hmm. do a lot of a lot of the judging uh, probably most of the judging um and um do you, you do the the fantasy stuff too, I think, right? I do. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, what Sean likes to call the behind the scenes queen. So, uh, you know, I, and I want to apologize to a lot of the fantasy people out there, like, please don't kill me. Um, <laughs> but uh, I know it's not always on a very timely basis, but sometimes the payouts aren't always given to me in a timely basis. Um, but it has gotten a lot better. Um, you know, and whatnot. So it is currently up to date. So, you know, you can still get in on some awesome action on the uh, fantasy fishing. So if you just go to fantasizer.com, which don't let that web domain throw you because <laughs> a lot of people are like, a what? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a little weird, but you yeah. probably don't want to type that wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Fanta S-I-Z-R. Okay. Nice. I think you can go to paddlingfin.com slash fantasy yes. as well. Yep. So it's on there. As that's, well. that's probably safer. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> not, not, not for kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. So yeah, doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff, um, you know, setting in, uh, setting up the, uh, uh, nerd. Oh, wow. <laughs> noobs. Not nerd. <laughs> I'm going to say noobs tourney, but you know, yeah. um, you know, been doing all that, uh, running the Dale hollow event, um, now. And of course, you know, whatever else comes our way. <laughs> right. Right. As we continue to grow. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and, um, that kind of brings us up to this season for you as well. So I know we wanted to talk a little bit about how it started and kind of where you went from there. Cause that's, <laughs> part yeah. of what brought you here so uh exactly. i figured that would be a good uh a good segue so most definitely so uh my season hmm. definitely uh started on i mean last year it ended on a high and it started on a high this year uh so last year i was part of the uh crossroads team uh with the kbl uh guys who had qualified as well and uh we were um doing that out on uh monroe lake in uh, Indiana, it was supposed to be on the White River, but it, it they had some crazy rain and it was all blown out. And so for safety and everything, they're like, yeah, we got to have it on the lake and everything. So I was like, OK, this may not be so bad because, you know, I'm used to lakes and stuff, whereas rivers are just like way out of my league still. <laughs> the White River is a fun river when it's safe. And so uh, pre-fishing, you know, we did pretty good. And uh, day one, you know, our uh, number one team guy, Steve Glinka, <laughs> interesting fella. <laughs> he, uh, he just knocked it out of the park, you know, but like it, with it being a team event, it was interesting because like, usually with tournaments, you know, you're like, okay, keep to yourself, you know, don't tell anybody what the juice is, but like, this is completely opposite. It's just like, you want all of your teammates to be, you know, using the same thing, you know, covering as much water as you can, all that other stuff. And, um, at day two, I think we only won it by like, it, it was like, gosh, was it like an inch and a quarter or something like that? It was like a super close. And there was like eight other teams. So like, and they were five man teams. So, I mean, you got to think about, you know, five man teams, five fish max, like that's, 
that's a lot. <laughs> so right. uh, yeah, we took home that win, which was awesome. And then uh, my season started um, off really good too. So uh, the Gerby, uh, also known as the Grassroots Bass Yakking, uh, for the Illinois region, uh, had their championship from the 2021 20, season at uh, Otter Lake, which is about, um, if you're familiar with like Springfield, Illinois, it's like south southwest of there, about 40 some odd minutes or something like that. And uh, I've been on that lake before and I hated it the first time. <laughs> but I was like, eh, I'm not really looking forward to this lake. But like, I also wasn't looking forward to the weather because <laughs> the mornings, it was like 35 degrees. It was cold. And like the few days before it had been in like, you know, the fifties and whatnot. Then we had this wow. crazy cold front come through and it was just like, ugh. But, uh, you know, it was a two day tournament. And uh, it was only me and I'm trying to think how many people competed in that one. It wasn't a whole lot. I think it was only maybe like 15 or 18. And uh, day one, <laughs> I, I think I had like a four inch lead for <laughs> everybody. I was just like, okay. I mean, I was just, I, I didn't catch a lot of fish, but like I had two kickers that just, you know, kind of took off for everything. And then day two, it was really close. I think it was, I think it was only like an inch or three quarters of an inch difference uh, between me and second place. So I got, I finally <laughs> got my first win. And then day one, too, I'd also gotten my, uh, I got big bass as well. Nice. So, you know, that was a little bit of a double wing. And so then, um, you know, the KBL season was going to be kicking off. And this spring was just so weird weather-wise. And uh, we were supposed to have uh, our first tournament at San Chris Lake, which is just outside of Springfield as well, but on the other side. Uh, but we unfortunately had to cancel it because of uh, severe thunderstorms and whatnot. So then our next tournament was going to be up in um, Wisconsin on – we had to choose, we could choose between, I'm probably going to say this wrong, o Oconomowoc and was it Okauchi? <laughs> yeah, it's Wisconsin Lake names for you. Anyway, <laughs> and like, you know, I've been to um, Oconomowoc before and I just was kind of like, eh, about it, you know, but then mm -hmm. like the other one, um, it wasn't as bad, but like I drove up the <laughs> I drove up the day before and th this is kind of what threw me too is they had changed the schedule a little bit because usually KBL has tournaments on Sundays well this one was actually going to be on a Saturday well I drove up on Friday you know thinking that I was going to pre-fish on Saturday and then I'm like oh crap so like <laughs> I didn't really get to pre-fish or anything <laughs> And, uh, I mean, I did okay. I got my five fish, but I think I fell in like the middle of the field. Um, but I mean, these guys, uh, there's some sticks in KBL. And I mean, like guys were on, um, economy walk and I was on like the Okauchi or whatever that one was. Um, they were on economy walk and they were just getting smallies that were like, you know, on beds and stuff like that. It was just insane. The size of those smallies. Um, so that was, um, kind of sort of like my first, um, tournament, at, at least like live tournament per se. I did a couple other online tournaments, uh, but, uh, that came to a screeching halt <laughs> in June. Uh, after, uh, the end of the season last fall, um, I started having some shoulder pain and whatnot, you know, nothing that was debilitating or whatever, but, I had to have a, a shot in it like back in 2017 just for some, you know, really aggravating thing. But then the shot helped and hadn't had any problems since. And so, you know, it was just like it was it was kind of intense pain. I was like, OK, you know, well, let's see if I can get a shot and see what it does. And uh, I was like, well, let's just get an MRI, too, just to see what's going on, because it took an X-ray and they like would uh, say, well, you see this dot just hanging out outside your shoulder? I'm like, yeah, he's like. Well, that's a calcium deposit in your rotator cuff. And I'm like, okay, that's great. <laughs> and then he's like, well, you may not be able to tell, 
you know, but you like, you see this area here. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, that's like your AC joint. And like your collarbone is really, really, really pissed off right now. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, okay. So, but like, according, you know, to the MRI or whatever, they didn't see any tear or anything like that. But lo and behold, so February, I got a shot, another injection. It didn't do anything. And then I tried another one uh, back in June. Just, you know, I was like, all right, one final hurrah. I tried physical therapy. Like I, I couldn't even get through the therapy. <laughs> And like I was starting to get to the point too with like fishing stuff like I couldn't even like get my kayak in the bed of the truck and then like I couldn't even lift the damn net. That's oh, what wow. really pissed me off. It was just like <laughs> I go to reach my net and when I would try to lift it I just couldn't and I'd be like what is happening? <laughs> you know? And so like that kind of told me you know that something definitely is going on and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So um Went back to the doctor in July-ish. Yeah, uh, follow up a month later after my second shot in June. <clears throat> me, you know, he's like, "All right, well, did it help or did it not?" And I'm like, "Yeah, no, nothing." He's like, "Okay, what do you want to do?" And I'm like, "Let's just get her done." <laughs> so, uh, in let's see here, eight days. Ten, or hold on seven sorry 12 days i'll be having my surgery <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so yeah they're they're gonna do like a, a scope in there they're gonna shave down my um uh, collarbone he's gonna do some fishing out of that calcium deposit and then looking to see if there's anything else in there I'll be in a sling for a couple of weeks, depending upon, you know, what all he has to do and everything. So no more fishing for Susie for a while. Well, I know that that is really, really sad. But um, if there is a silver lining, is that you're able to do the noob show now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. I'm like, you know, I think this is really going to help me stay sane. No, I, you know, and that's, you know, that was why I've actually, you know, kind of reached out and first wanted to do this because I needed something to get me through the winters. Um, yes. cause I, I needed something to, you know, cause otherwise I would just sit and buy a tackle and mm -hmm. that wasn't going to be a sustainable <laughs> thing to do. So oh my gosh, if I, yes. if I wanted to stay married, uh, I needed to <laughs> find a, a more healthier outlet for my uh, off season. Now, of course I have the, you know, the, the dry suit and stuff, so I can fish oh, yeah. during that time, which helps, but, um, but uh, no, and uh, so I definitely know what you're saying there that, about keeping you sane. And um, I also, uh, I know we talked a little bit before the show, but I, I went through a very similar process. I, uh, you know, uh, ended up tearing my labrum playing volleyball. Um, so I, very similar surgery to the, uh, to the uh, rotator cuff surgery. It's, it's the labrum is the cup that the rotator cuff kind of uh, sits in. It's like, oh, okay. and um so I tore that. And then also from 20 years of playing volleyball, he said, even, even if you wouldn't have torn it, it was, it looked like it was just completely shredded Ooh. from 20 years of volleyball. So he kind of cleaned it up and then I had, you know, screws and they, they needed something to attach it to. So yeah, I guess they, the they yeah, they yeah. <laughs> screw in some screws with some loops on them. And then that, that's how they tie everything together. But nope. I did the whole, you know, sling thing for a while and, I was telling you some of the weird things. So definitely uh, an interesting time. At, you take for granted what you can do with two hands uh, or what you can't do with two hands. Um, but um, yeah. so uh, and uh, but yeah, so um, uh, I know that that's going to be rough. And it, but um, I can say, well, I, I have mixed feelings on that because um, I had the surgery probably, I want to say, five years ago, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And now there's times where my shoulder feels almost the same that it did prior to my surgery. Oh, yeah. So, um, like, I always notice it, like, getting a milk jug out of the fridge, like, that, the, just that weight. I'm like, ooh. Uh, but yeah. especially when I play volleyball. Like, and he told me, you know, your, it's, your shoulder is probably never going to be 100% back to where it was. Right. And, yeah. um, and I. Where? I mean, yeah. Yeah. To be honest, too, though, I, I didn't do I, like I did the initial therapy 100 percent, like everything mm -hmm. they told me I needed to do. I was like, I want to be back. 
And so I did that hardcore and then like, well, but you should keep doing uh, rotator cuff strengthening and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I, I did it for a while and then, you know, didn't keep up with it the way I should. Right. Yeah. Um, so part of that's on me and, and it might feel better if I actually strengthened it properly, but um, it gets me through for what I do. I don't play as much volleyball anymore. I remember when he, when it first happened, he's like, well, you can either have rotator or labrum surgery, or you can never play volleyball again. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> that's not happening. Cut her right. open, get her done. You know, <clears throat> that's a tough question, <laughs> but I, uh, you know, I, I don't play as much uh, during COVID. My, my volleyball playing really took a hit because no, there was no oh, place yeah. to really play. So, and that's when I really started fishing a ton more. And um, now I kind of, would prefer to fish over play volleyball at this point, but I still do play on occasion. So, um, uh, but it, maybe it, not as aggressively. <laughs> yeah. So, and yeah, yeah. And I'm not as young as I once was. Either, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, cause I was a pretty aggressive volleyball player, you know, diving all over the place. And, you know, I, I definitely, uh, have paid the price for that as I've gotten older. Cause I still, uh, I forget that I shouldn't be doing that. So, and, <laughs> What used to be where well, I'd shake it off after, you know, I'd go to bed sore, wake up in the morning and be fine. Now it's three days of, oh, crap, what did I do? <laughs> you know? Yep. Yep. So, yeah. and, I, and I usually start feeling better about the time I go play again. And then I dive mm -hmm. around and I'm like, oh, that sucks. Yep. Do it all over again. You're just so, like, I'm not doing it myself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, um, well, yeah, I'm excited to have, uh, have you on. I know, uh, you know, you definitely are familiar with, you know, tons of different techniques and stuff. And so I'm ex super excited for that. Um, super excited for the connections that you bring. Uh, mm -hmm. I know, you, you know, you have a lot of connections with people all around the industry. So I'm super excited for that as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I just can't say enough that I think how great uh, it's going to be to have you. So super oh, yeah. psyched. I'm totally um, excited too, you know, and I'm like, you know, I've been trying to think about it over, you know, the past few months too, like, you know, as I've been, you know, been able to fish less and less, I'm just like, okay, you know, maybe I should just get back into the podcast, you know, but then I'm like, I feel like I need to do, be doing a little something different instead of like what I was doing. I'm a person who likes, you know, change. Like I, I like consistency to a certain extent, but I'm like, I need like something different. I need to mix it up a little bit, you know, and uh, I was talking to Brian a little bit and he's just like, well, you know, I think somebody might be looking for a co-host. I'm like, oh, you don't say. And he's like, well, yeah, I think Sean's going to be one. And I'm like, boom, that's it. And it was just like a light bulb went off. I was like, perfect. You know, yep. because like, you know, I'm, I, I'm all about the teaching aspect of everything too. Um, and for those of you who may not know me as well, I'm also heavily involved with the Women's Fishing Federation as well. Um, and, you know, helping them run that event each year. Um, and so we just had that in uh, Lake Fork, Texas, uh, which I was able to get to this year as well, um, which was a lot of fun. I mean, it, it's Texas too. And if you haven't seen it yet, you need to go to my Facebook profile or to my Instagram and find the video of me getting excited to see the <laughs> bitty <bitty> alligator. <laughs> <laughs> if that tells you anything about who I am, that that's me in a nutshell right there. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, you know, that event, you know, is to help get women, uh, you know, more exposed in the industry, get more knowledge, skills, confidence, you know, and, you know, it's not just about, um, you know, learning techniques and stuff like that. It is, but like, you know, we had Jeff Little uh, this year who did a seminar on flipping a kayak and then getting back onto it, you know, which was like really awesome because, you know, he, he is like a top notch, instructor angler all around you know person and just he's so knowledgeable and then the way that he presents everything too is just like you know he puts it in such a way that everybody's able to like understand and comprehend so he was a really good um uh, resource to have there and to teach us all the stuff that he did you know and like i even was just like oh i never even thought of that you know because uh he had a uh 
oh, I think he had like a 12 or 14 foot strap um, that he always keeps on his kayak for this specific reason. I'm like, okay, I, yeah, I'm going to have one with me along with a pair of goggles as well for <laughs> no particular reason at all. You know. Right. No, yeah. It might, no. might just happen to come in handy. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have flipped my kayak once, and uh, my trip keys went down uh, to the bottom. Luckily, I was in six foot of water, and it was relatively clearish. It was on um, Lake Mendota in Wisconsin, and uh, I, <laughs> I, I literally got on somebody's dock, ran up to this random dude, pushed him on his lawn, and I was like, <laughs> Hey, listen, like I flipped my kayak. My keys are at the bottom of the lake. Do you have goggles or something I can borrow? And he's like, well, let me go ask the wife real quick. You know what I mean? Granted, this home that this dude is in is like a cool couple million dollars. <laughs> you know, here I am, you know, soaking wet and everything. Be like, do you have any goggles that I can borrow? <laughs> and sure enough, like. Two minutes later, he comes down with a full snorkel set. And I'm like, oh, my God. Thank you so much. So, like, I dove down. <clears throat> and, like, the second time I got down there, I finally found my keys. So, oh, yeah. It was a, he was a lifesaver. Along with, um, oh, my gosh, what was her name? Dottie. She was the random kayaker who uh, helped me, you know, get yeah, everything yeah. back up and everything and all that other stuff, too. But, you know, there that wasn't like an intentional flip or anything like that. Um, my 360 drive belt had snapped, and so my pedals were stuck kind of going cockeyed. There was a cliff wall to the left of me. There was tons of boat traffic. So, like, not only the waves from the boat traffic was getting me, but the reverb off of the uh, cliff wall. And so, like, I was trying to get to this dock, which was maybe... 15 feet in front of me. Oh. This is what really made me angry because like, I was right there. <laughs> and so like I reached back to try to grab my paddle so I could try to steer better. And just the waves hit me just right. And I had leaned just enough to where a wave hit me just right. And just boop, over I went. I came up and I was just like, I was, I was just so <laughs> stunned. I was just like, what? What? <laughs> Then, like, I almost had that moment of panic. I was like, holy shit, what am I going to do? I'm like, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm alive. Yep. I'm not freezing to death. I'm not in any immediate danger. My stuff is everywhere. I'm okay. Just calm down. <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah, I'm uh, definitely excited. Uh, glad to bring, you know, knowledge, experience, um, ideas, you know, and maybe even learn some things, you know, from Sean and other people as well. You know, I mean, that's the thing about fishing or any other sport, you know, you're always learning new and different things. And, you know, like I said earlier, I've still not yet touched or learned how to use the Carolina rig. So yeah, I need to do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, and that, again, that's, that's, that was one of my main selfish reasons for getting started with this is I figured if, you know, I, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to learn a ton of stuff. And I have learned so much from doing this. It's uh, I can't even tell you, um, you know, my wife, my brain is like so full. My wife is like, I don't know how you keep anything. In there. <laughs> and uh, I'm currently studying for a test for my job. And uh, I'm telling you, it's a struggle because there's a lot of fishing stuff in there. And I don't I think I'm uh, like running out of room. So, you know, I wish I could purge a little stuff just to make enough room for this. Tip. <laughs> right. We'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah. So, well, again, uh, super excited um, uh, just for, you know, everything that you're bringing to the show. And, and uh, I can't wait to see where we go. So yeah. um, anything else you wanted to cover today? Um, we're going to start off, I guess, next week with our, our, our guest. Uh, we'll find somebody, um, I think. We have, uh, I'm trying to think what we, we had talked about that a little bit. But. I'm trying to remember what we talked about too. I can't remember either, but I know I've got you <clears throat> booked for, uh, yes. you know, recording again. So, yeah. yep. Uh, oh, yeah. But we will find somebody um, and uh, kind of get back to the, the, the techniques that you guys all love. You know, we'll, we'll cover something and uh, find a good guest and uh, definitely dig back in next week. So uh, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the people uh, in the Noobs Tournament. For August, I saw a couple people are on the board. There's uh, one guy who's way up there already. 
Um, I actually am doing better this year than, or this month than I did. Last month was terrible. Um, <laughs> I don't think I, I put a fish on the board. It was kind of sad. Um, but uh, some of that was camp. I, and I did catch fish, like I said, but uh, I just didn't have my identifier with me or, you know, for whatever oh, reason. Oh, no. So <laughs> You're I, such a noob. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then like up at camp, I fished and that wasn't private. That was uh, private water. So that, that didn't count. Um, so, and then COVID and all that mm. fun stuff. So, um, but yeah, uh, Jacob constant is right now sitting in first place with 85 inches already. So he's off to a good start. Um, I'm in second with 73 and a half. And then, uh, Andrew Watson is, uh, in third with 68 and three quarters. So, um, and, and there's a few people below him that have some fish on the board already. So for those of you guys who uh, don't have a fish on the board, get out there, uh, hit the water, beat those banks, um, find some fish and get on the board. I know uh, by the end of the month, I'm sure uh, a ton more people will have some fish on the board. But if you need any help or need any uh, suggestions or anything, definitely check out the uh, um, Noobs Facebook group. Um, if you just search for Paddle and Fin Noobs Tournament, I think there's a you'll be able to find the Facebook group for it. And there's tons of good conversations there. We just uh, I was just talking to somebody on there about uh, – staying out of lightning and, you know, being safe about that. So definitely tons of good information. So that's a nice fish. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> so you're getting a little sneak peek of what, uh, the, the judging for attorney X looks like. I started actually judging for kayak anglers of central PA, uh, this year. And, um, so, uh, and I was doing it on my phone until I realized how much better it was on the computer. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm bringing my computer with me everywhere I go now. So, cause it's yes. just so much nicer on a computer, but yeah. Like, you know, attorney X, you can kind of hover your mouth, uh, uh, mouse with this, uh, zoom in tool here, you know, to check, uh, check, check on the mouth, you know, make sure that the eye looks like it's good and everything. Check the mark where the tail is, all that other stuff. Um, if you scroll down further, it shows like their GPS location, all that, but you know, for privacy and all that other fun stuff, I'm not, obviously, you know, not going to give that stuff away, but right. Uh, right. yeah, this is where you would, if, um, you know, they had either a typo or something like that, you could change the, uh, length in here and then comments, they do give you some basic ones, or you can just choose other and then type in your own comments. So like, you know, if I have to deduct because of an open mouth, you know, I'll usually put deduction for open mouth. Um, or sometimes, you know, like if they had a decent picture, but like it was really blurry or something like that, I might say just barely able to read, try to make sure you have a clear photo in future submissions, stuff like that. Yeah, I know like the just the first tournament I did, uh, one guy had a catch board that the lines were barely like it was a yellow board like a bright yellow yes. board with like not i'm like dude you got to highlight your lines because you can't even and then one guy had a, a white board i don't know what kind of board it was oh the I, original hog trough with like the white one. Oh, it was horrible it was like <laughs> yes <laughs> Those it, it, it like horrible. created a glare that you couldn't even read <laughs> anything it looked Looked like the fish was just on a white piece of plastic. I'm like, I got nothing, you know? Yes. Um, yeah, those, so long story short on, you know, like the history of like measuring boards and everything. So with like KBF and Hobie and stuff like that, you know, they used to allow like um, what was called like a hog trough um, and a, what was it called? Like the flip stick or something like that. Um it, it was like a foldable measuring board or whatever. And then of course, um, catch company, uh, K E T C H. They were like, well, Hey, let's, let's make something better. And, uh, I was going to try to log in here to show you, uh, what a, um, hawk trough, uh, looks like, uh, if you guys aren't familiar, a lot of, um, uh, trails and stuff have kind of like outlawed them now just because of Jeez. some controversy, co controversies <laughs> that happened a couple of years ago, stuff like that. But uh, actually, yeah, let's see if I can pull up my 2017. Uh, I think that my first uh, board was a, a fishing online. I don't know. Was that a hog drop? I can't remember what. I know I bought it on fishing online and uh, it was not a catch board. Mm. but it was it, neon yellow and um, yes. I, I, 
I went through and highlighted it with my, by myself because it didn't come like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. But, yeah. And a lot of, yeah, a lot of clubs would be like, you got to highlight your boards and everything and all that. So yeah, here's my 22 inch bass on my old school uh, hog trough measuring board. <laughs> so like, yeah, we had to go in and like highlight or uh, take Sharpie. a shirt for all the lines and everything and whatnot. And believe it or not, the other part of this story is um, this was the only photo out of like, I don't know, 15, 20 pictures I took of this fish where I had everything in view. Like the other, <laughs> I was like shaking so bad. Like other ones, like I had the identifier like cropped out or like it was blurry and everything. And just like that one was just happened to be the best one out of all of them. So. <laughs> My PV Smalley is kind of the opposite. I have the picture on the board and that's it. Cause um, I, I took it off the board and then I was getting ready to, you know, Put my camera to take the my hero shot with it and i was shaking so much i dropped it so <laughs> oh, i had i have my picture on the board of it uh so i have my actual measurement but that's it i never got a shot with it with me or with anything else so oh man <laughs> but uh yeah you know we'll find another one so right yeah i know <laughs> there are still some clubs that you know will allow the hog troughs um some of them will even allow the um I don't know what the metal ones are the, that the bass boat guys. Oh, use. yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I know. I I guess our, you know, kayak anglers of Central PA is pretty lenient on theirs. Are they? I think yeah. They're... And a lot of them might be, too, because, you know, they understand that, you know, some people can't really invest in catch boards right off the bat. Um, you know, because, like, the metal ones, they are a little pricey. But also what that is, like, you invest in it once, it's going to last you a lifetime. You just got to remember to make sure it's tethered yep. <laughs> to your kayak. <laughs> I and, uh, can't tell you how many uh, hog troughs I went through. I probably went like through six or seven because they just, they broke. Yeah. No. And I, mine broke pretty quick too. I broke the fence right off it. Like, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. that kind of sucked. So, uh, but uh, I actually spray foamed mine too underneath on that. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So that it would float. But yeah, um, nice. Nice. But um, now I have I just graduated to my first metal catch board. I Whoa. had to for the for the Hobie event, so oh, yeah. I didn't realize that until uh, like oh, a week yes. before. And I was like, "Oh crap! I need a metal catch board." And so uh, I was able to get one sent to me relatively quickly. And awesome. so now I I have my first metal catch board. I I'm I'm still um, like torn though. I you know when I go out on the river, I'm like I could just bring the carbonite board. It's lighter. It's you know, um, but I'm like, oh, the, the metal one's so pretty. I, I got it. It is. Did you get the Catch X or like the? the... Uh, I think it's the Catch X. It's the, the X. one with, the, yeah, the measurements on the side. Yes. Or, yes. Yeah, and kind of the lighter aluminum build too, because they the first ones that they came out with were these heavy <laughs> measuring <laughs> boards, which you could probably like run that thing over with a semi and it wouldn't even be fakes. <laughs> <laughs> These things were so durable, but they would sink straight to the bottom if you dropped it. <laughs> and um, uh, I had, um, uh, uh, who stayed with me? Ethan, uh, I'm, I'm so horrible with names. Uh, yeah, he was here with us. I got to look it up real quick because um, he was nice enough. He is on the rogue fishing team. And because I let him stay with me, uh, Ethan Jet, um, oh, nice. I, I let him stay. Or him and his buddy Stuart stayed with me for the Hobie event, and so because uh, you know I, I let him kind of crash here, uh, he totally hooked me up with a, a few things from Rogue, and one of those things was a uh, one of the awesome catchboard tethers with the the quick release. Ooh. So I can't tell you how nice that is, um, just to be able to pull it from behind me, pop it loose, take my picture, and clip it right back. Know is it's that safe. The and, nether loss tether. Uh, no, it's it's actually it's rogue and it, it um, I forget what the name of it is. I should look it up here. Um, while we're talking, I'll I'll look it up quick because um, yeah. it is super nice for. Uh, let's see if I can find it here while we're talking. Yeah, I'll admit uh, that uh, when I have my catch board with me, I usually don't tether it just because I kind of got fed up with trying to get the tether untangle <laughs> all the time because I'd put it next to me or something like that. So most of the time now I'm just like, yeah, I just 
you know, throw it back in the deck of my uh, my OB. <laughs> right, right. I know there's going to be that one time where I'd be like, well, yep, slipped right off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, share screen. I want to do... I'll do a window or a Chrome tab. That's what I'll do. <laughs> Titan board leash. That's what it's called. So uh, let's see here. Go back Ooh, here. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that. so uh, it's it's super nice. Um, that the the clip you can see there right here. It uh mm -hmm. it comes apart just by squeezing those two little tabs. So this part hooks right through the hole in your catch board, and it's nice and sturdy. And um, I gotta say, I'm digging it big time. Thanks to Ethan Jet for hooking me up, and uh, he he gave me a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, some stuff. Um, that's not out yet, but it's really, Ooh. I get to beta test a little bit. So that was cool. Nice. Um, definitely. They got some cool stuff coming. So um, guys keep uh, definitely check that out. And um, for sure, uh, some cool stuff coming from rogue. So very nice. And you know, it, <laughs> it was also a little bit of a, um, it was kind of soul crushing too. Like that my season had to end shortly because <laughs> <laughs> not only did I, um, so I actually got a brand new power pole because the one I had, I mean, I bought it used from somebody and just the, the top of it was kind of loose and it wasn't making a good connection. So it would just randomly turn off. So wow. I contacted um, power pole, you know, and said, Hey, you know, this is what's going on with this unit. You know, what do you suggest or whatever? He uh, said, well, here's the here's an address i want you to mail it to and then include this number on here and we're going to ship you a brand new replacement i'm like what so i was like holy crap i was like all right that's awesome <laughs> so then i finally got to use it i think i've got to use it twice um and then <laughs> i i haven't even like physically picked it up yet because <laughs> i'm almost too depressed too but uh <laughs> I got a motor. Nice. <laughs> so, nice. Yeah, I got a Newport motor, but I I haven't even physically seen it yet. So <laughs> I'm like, all right, 2022, you know, you may have, you know, had to end soon, but 2023, man, like. Good things are coming. Knock it out. Good knock it out. <laughs> and I know um, I, we didn't really mention a whole lot about it, but being on the Hobie team, that's got to be kind of pretty sweet it's, gig too it's pretty nice you know um i got a uh outback as uh my pro boat uh you know to kind of use for this season and i took it with me to texas and you know uh i had a bunch of ladies who were able to you know use it and get it and everything mm -hmm. and then uh, once i got home i i never got to use it i wanted it to t i wanted to try it out on um uh a local river river uh that's maybe I don't know, 10, 15 minutes away. And I know there's small mouth in there, mm -hmm. um, but you have to kind of like portage to get to it. And I was like, I don't want to portage my PA, you know, that thing's a tank, but like an yeah. outback, that'd be easy. But mm -hmm. it just, it just didn't happen. And like, I knew I wouldn't be able to anyway, just with my shoulder getting worse and worse. And I'm like, yeah, this is not a good idea. So both have been sitting in my garage. <laughs> I see him every single day when I go to work and I'm like, I miss you. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I know, uh, uh, I think the, the Outback, uh, now I've never fished out of a PA. Um, I've sat in them before, but I, the, the layout of the cockpit in a, an Outback, I just, you know, it is to me almost perfect. Like there's really a not a lot I would change. Uh, mm -hmm. Because and they've I, come a long way with that too, because they've upgraded it. So when I got my very first Outback, it had the <laughs> well seat. So like it oh, was just wow. like the yeah, it was like the form seat. So like it had like you know the the blow up cushion to it, and just like <laughs> it was like eh. and then they finally upgraded to um, not quite like what the PA has, but a little bit more comfortable of a style chair. Um, mm -hmm. So you like that was big and then they remodeled uh like the front deck and the front hatch so like the front hatch isn't as big as what it used to be but man that deck space and then the built-in h rails dude mm -hmm. that was yeah. like the best thing they did for that kayak yeah yeah no I, I, there's so many rigging options like yes. i mean there's uh, these little like stretchy tethers that are mm -hmm. everywhere um i, I mean 
everything and everything's right within reach, you know? Yes. It, you know, it, it just, um, I, I, I'm in love with it. And I, I was just talking to Jake Harshman about that last week that um, I don't know that I could find another kayak that would be as universal for everything that I do with it. Cause mm -hmm. I do use it on the river. People are like, Oh, you use fins on the river. And it doesn't that. And I'm like, yeah, it works for me, you know, and um, it, it, I can move. It's quick. It's maneuverable. You know, it's not crazy heavy. Um, yeah. I don't know how you do a PA. Cause I, I, I have, there's times where like I, after I'm a long day out on the water, I'm struggling just to lift the, the, at the outback. I don't know how I would do a, a, a PA, how do you, um, how do you transport your outback? Just in the back of my pickup. Uh, oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, I have the T-bone for my uh, truck. And mm -hmm. so like that made a night and day difference. Cause like I was trailering for a while cause I used to have a RAV, you know, and yeah. I was just like, I'm tired of this trailer and the way that the bunks are and everything. It was awkward. So then like I invested in a truck and then I got the T-bone I'm like, Night and day difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I thought I, I, the T bone is on my list at some point, but I, I just haven't needed it because I, I don't go far. Well, actually, mm -hmm. I drove to Tennessee with it hanging out the back of my. Oh car. yeah. So and it survived. Oh. It it's probably yeah. not the most legal thing ever, but you know, <laughs> yeah, you know as long as you got a flag, you're fine. <laughs> no, I know, but uh, at yeah. uh, at some point, I probably will invest in a T bone. I, I've seen actually a couple different cool things too. So um, yeah, but and but you know, for right. I, yeah, I would actually almost recommend getting like the the bed extender from like Harbor Freight or whatever because mm -hmm. I mean the T bones are are good and everything. They're lightweight, but what they sacrifice to make it lightweight, um, you know, when I accidentally bumped into a telephone pole, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the brackets snapped right off. On wow. It, okay. You know? Which I mean, granted, it makes sense because you know it's attached to my truck what's going to give first the telephone pole, my truck, or that, you know, aluminum bracket, you know, right, so right. But now that I got this, uh, heavy metal bed extender, like that thing ain't going to go anywhere. <laughs> well, I know uh, the people who make T-bone also make, uh, uh, a rack that goes on top of your bed. Cause I know when I go on vacation, oh, yeah. a lot of times I end up driving separate because we can't fit all the stuff. And uh, yep. so that yep. I was looking at that too. Um, you know, I, I'm like, well, maybe that way. The only thing I can't do with that though, is then um, I can't figure out the way my bed cover is. I wouldn't be able to use both. Oh, so gotcha. you don't have like a roll up cover. Is it like a hard, it's, it's a roll up cover? cover, but it goes oh. where, where the, the, uh, that rack would mount is covered by uh, the roll up cover because it goes out over top of my rails. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. so, you know, I haven't figured out exactly how I want to do yeah. that yet, but there's definitely, and who knows by then, you know, at some point I'll probably get a trailer, but um, yeah, we'll see. So lots of room for improvement. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Susie, thanks so much for coming yeah. on and thanks again for joining the, the team again. Um, that's, it's going to be awesome to have you. So, um, yeah. um, do you want to give a shot at the, the closing, the news closing? Do you know it? <laughs> oh, now you're going to put me on the spot. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. I figured I can do it. Um, I, yep. I know, uh, I was listening to, uh, when brought, when I was on vacation, Brian and Jimmy, uh, covered for me and it was funny listening to them, uh, trying to do it because I still screw it up from time to time, <laughs> but, uh, I've said it so many times now, it kind of, you know. But now watch, I'll, I'll screw it up. But <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, thanks again for tuning in for another episode of Fast Fishing for Noobs, where we bring you the tricks that I screwed it up. See, <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. Tricks and techniques. <laughs> the, tri the techniques, the tricks, and the tips to help you rip more lips. That's it. Boom. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you next week. Bye. <laughs> thanks for tuning in to another killer episode here on Paddle and Finn. Be sure to drop a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or smash that subscribe button on any platform you're listening in on. Be sure to check us out on Waypoint TV, waypointtv.com. Make sure you sign up for the Fantasy Kayak Fishing League at paddleandfin.com forward slash fantasy. You could support this show through Patreon, patreon.com forward slash paddleandfin. Don't forget to check out the website, paddleandfin.com. Catch us on YouTube. 
If you got a question, comment, or want to see a future guest on the show, be sure to email us at paddlingfin at gmail.com. Shout out to our show supporters, Yak Gadget. You can check out all the fine kayak accessories at yakgadget.com. Pelican Professional. For all your cases, coolers, and lighting needs, go to pelican.com. Rocktown Adventures, your Midwest premier paddle sports destination. Go to rocktownadventures.com. Eastport Marina, the beautiful destination on Dale Hollow Lake. If you're looking for lodging, kayaks, kayak accessories, or anything fishing related on the beautiful Dale Hollow Lake, go to eastport.info. And Jig Masters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and fill your tackle boxes today.